Did you know that one of the most popular stories from ancient Greece features cannibalism and incest? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about one of the most misfortunate families in Greek mythology, one that was plagued by curses for five generations. Today's video is all about the curse of the house of Atreus. Don't forget the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week. So make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. Despite being known as the House of Atreus, this myth and the curses, yes, there was more than one, didn't start with Atreus, but with his grandfather Tantalus. Tantalus was the son of the god Zeus and the nymph Plauto. He was the king of Sipolis and was a good friend of the gods. He frequented Mount Olympus for banquets of the food and drink of the gods, nectar and ambrosia. Despite being so intimate with the gods, Tantalus wanted to know if they really were omniscient, so he hatched a plot. He invited the gods to his home on Mount Sipolis for a feast and made a stew out of his son, Pelops, to see if the gods really did know everything. Immediately, the gods knew what Tantalus had done, all except Demeter, who had recently had her daughter Persephone abducted by Hades. And in her grief and being distracted as she was, she took a bite of the stew, eating Pelops' shoulder. Zeus was enraged by Tantalus's heinous act and punished him in the underworld to forever suffer an unquenchable and unending hunger and thirst. From his crime, the first curse fell on the house of Atreus. After his father was safely being punished in Tartarus, Pelops was resurrected by Zeus, and since his shoulder was eaten by Demeter, he received a new one fashioned out of ivory. After a short stint on Mount Olympus with Poseidon, after the god fell in love with him, Pelops left with a new chariot that could travel across the sea without getting wet, and he headed out on his own and ended up in the court of King Onimaeus. Pelops wanted to marry the king's daughter Hippodamia, but since the king had received a prophecy that he would be killed by his son-in-law, he had so far made sure his daughter remained unmarried. He did that by challenging any suitor of Hippodamia to a chariot race, and they could only marry her if they won, and if they lost, they were killed. However, Onimaeus had horses given to him by Ares, so he was yet to lose. When Pelops arrived, Hippodamia fell in love with his beauty, and so went to her father's servant, Myrtilus, for help. Myrtilus was a son of Hermes, and just so happened to be in love with Hippodamia as well, so he agreed to help her. On the day of the race, Myrtilus sabotaged the king's chariot, so during the race, the wheels fell off and he was killed, either in the accident or by Pelops after the race. Pelops defended himself, claiming that Hippodamia said that she would have sex with him if he helped Pelops win the chariot race. Whether that was true or not didn't really matter. Pelops was enraged and killed the son of Hermes, who with his dying breath cursed Pelops and his family, bringing the tally to two curses on the house of Atreus. Despite the curses that plagued him, Pelops became a great king of much of the southern Greek peninsula that still bears his name, the Peloponnese, meaning the island of Pelops. Pelops and Hippodamia had many children together, but their marriage didn't stay a happy one. Pelops ended up having a son with the nymph Astyache named Chrysippus, who quickly became Pelops' favorite child. Hippodamia, though, was worried that her children would be overlooked as Pelops' heir, and so Chrysippus was killed, either by Hippodamia herself or by her sons, Atreus and Thyestes. When Pelops learnt of the culprits of his son's murder, he had his wife and sons banished, and in her grief, Hippodamia hanged herself. Atreus and Thyestes, though, headed to the city of Mycenae. 
the rivalry between the brothers blossomed with the help of Hermes, who wanted revenge for the death of his son. In Atreus's flock, Hermes placed a lamb with golden fleece. And although Atreus had vowed to sacrifice the finest of his flock to Artemis, he only sacrificed the flesh to the goddess and kept the fleece in a chest for himself. He boasted of his precious fleece, all while his jealous brother plotted how to get his hands on his brother's treasure. A scheme came to him in the form of Atreus' new wife, Aerope, who had fallen in love with Thyestes. Thyestes agreed to have an affair with her, but only if she would steal the chest with the lamb's fleece in it. Aerope agreed and did just that, but neither were aware that Artemis had put a curse on it, because Atreus had failed to sacrifice the entire lamb to her. And this brings the curse tally up to three. At this point, Mycenae was in need of a new king, and since the Oracle of Delphi advised the people to choose a son of Pelops as their next king, a council meeting was held with the two brothers to determine who should rule. Atreus boasted that the man with the golden fleece should be king, and to his surprise, his brother agreed to these terms. And upon revealing that he was the new owner of the fleece, Thyestes became the new king of Mycenae. Zeus, however, wanted Atreus to be the next king. So he sent Hermes down to get the brothers to reach an agreement that if the sun ever reversed its course in the sky and set in the east, Thyestes would abdicate and Atreus would become king. Since the terms were absolutely absurd, Thyestes agreed. And afterwards, Zeus had Helios reverse his course in the sky for the first and last time ever, which meant Thyestes was forced to give the throne to Atreus whose first order as king was for Thyestes' banishment from Mycenae. After banishing his brother, Atreus learnt of his wife's adultery. He invited his brother back under the false pretense that they could be co-rulers. And as soon as his brother agreed, Atreus killed his three nephews, dismembered them, and boiled them in a cauldron. When Thyestes returned to Mycenae, Atreus held a fabulous feast and served the stew made of Thyestes' sons. After eating the stew, Atreus brought out a dish containing the boy's severed heads, hands and feet, at which Thyestes vomited and in horror swore revenge on his brother before being exiled for a second time. In his banishment, Thyestes consulted the oracle, and I'm not sure how anyone thought incest could possibly help anything, but he was told that he must have a son with his daughter Pelopia, and it was only this son that could kill Atreus. At this point, Thyestes was willing to do anything to get revenge on his brother, so he disguised himself and seduced his own daughter. In the meantime, Atreus was told he needed to recall Thyestes from his exile, or else he would have to face the consequences for his crimes. And on his search for his brother, he found Pelopia, whom he thought was the daughter of a local king. Atreus fell in love with her, not knowing she was his niece, and they got married. When Pelopia gave birth to a son, Atreus thought it was his, but the child's father was actually Thyestes. The child was named Aegisthus and was raised in the palace of Atreus. Atreus still hadn't found his brother, so he sent out his sons, Agamemnon and Menelaus, to track him down. They found their uncle, brought him back to Mycenae, and threw him in the dungeon. Now that his brother was safe in prison, Atreus sent Aegisthus down to kill him, but the boy was quickly overpowered by his real father. Thyestes told the boy he would be spared if he did what he was told. His first task was to bring his mother to the dungeons. Pelopia was overjoyed to see her father, but her happiness quickly turned into horror when she learned that he was the father of Aegisthus. In response to this news, Pelopia took the sword Aegisthus was given to kill Thyestes and used it to kill herself. Aegisthus was then given his final request to kill Atreus, which he did. In the aftermath of the murder of Atreus, Thyestes took the throne of Mycenae, but his reign didn't last long. Agamemnon soon wrested the kingship from his uncle, and Thyestes was exiled for a third and final time. Although Atreus was dead, the curse of the house of Atreus did not end, but went on to afflict his children, known as the Atreidae, and his grandchildren. Atreus' sons Agamemnon and Menelaus are best known from the Trojan War, the 10-year siege to 
bring back Menelaus' wife Helen, who had been abducted by Paris of Troy. While the men were away at war, Agamemnon's wife Clytemnestra had taken Aegisthus as her lover, and had no loyalty or love left for her husband, who had sacrificed their daughter Iphigenia to the goddess Artemis on his way to Troy, in return for safe passage. When Agamemnon returned from the war with his concubine Cassandra, Clytemnestra was officially done. She drew a bath for her husband, and after covering him in a robe, either she or her lover stabbed him to death. Clytemnestra beheaded her husband for good measure, killed Cassandra, and then, along with Aegisthus, claimed rule of the kingdom. In wake of his father being murdered by his mother, her son Orestes went into exile, aided by his sister Electra. Orestes grew up juggling his moral obligation to avenge his father's murderer against the grave sin of matricide. To figure out whether he should avenge his father or spare his mother, he asked the Oracle of Delphi what he should do. And in response, the Oracle told him his duty was to avenge his father. With his decision made, Orestes travelled back to Mycenae and killed both his mother and Aegisthus. But after, he was plagued with guilt and was driven to madness by the Furies, the Divine Avengers, because of his act of matricide. Eventually, Apollo took pity on the boy and told him that he should go to Athens and stand trial before the Areopagus, a council that would be presided over by Athena. The council ruled in his favour, and not only was his guilt absolved, but after five generations, the curse of the House of Atreus was ended. This story, one of the most popular in ancient Greece and Rome, was famously dramatised by the playwrights Aeschylus and Seneca, whose works still draw an audience today, over 2,000 years later. Why do you think the story of the House of Atreus remains so popular? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more in our shop at worldhistory.store, or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon with another video.